congratulations, class of 2014. <laughs> you know, if you, if you will give me a little point of personal privilege. Um, graduates, stand up. And I want you to give a big round of applause to your parents and family members who supported you throughout this. Thank you. Thank you, family members. Well, good evening, President Lee, esteemed faculty, proud family, and graduates. I'm honored to be here at your graduation and to be among the very first to congratulate you on a job well done. As you leave behind your days here at Kaiser University and face a future unknown, you will bring with you all the hopes and prayers of those here in this room today. Remember, we are all rooting for you. I am honored and grateful for the invitation to stand before you today. You truly represent the best and the brightest, and my hope for each of you is that you become wildly successful in your chosen field, and that you do that right here in West Palm Beach. I have to be honest with you. As you probably know, my job requires me to speak in front of groups all of the time. On any given week, I might chair a city commission meeting from the dais at City Hall. I may speak to a group of business leaders here in the city. I might even find myself staring down a television camera or two or three. But speaking at a commencement is a big responsibility. As a commencement speaker, I'm expected to provide some sort of guidance or advice as you head out into what we call the real world. All of you have come to Kaiser University to pursue a particular career, to succeed in the real world. So I thought it might be interesting to talk to you about that competitive edge, those key characteristics that close the deal secure the prom promotion, or land the job. I have to say, I believe that each of you already has at least one of those key characteristics. Through your hard work, you have earned a degree from Kaiser University. But there are other things that can also distinguish you from the crowd, and that's what I'm here to discuss with you tonight. I don't know about you, but I'm one of those people who has taken all of those buzz, BuzzFeed tests. I found out I was a saint in a previous life. My color is yellow, my aura is blue, um, I've forgotten what my flower is, and I'm supposed to live in a bungalow. That being said, I thought there must be some information out there on what makes people successful. So I did a little research on traits of highly successful people. I found lots of articles. I found 10 essential characteristics of highly successful people, five things you need to know about being successful, 13 must-haves for success, and on and on and on. Having read them, it seems that the answer is simple. The path to success takes hard work, talent, and luck. But it seems to me there's more to it. While all of those are important, I would like to tell you about Adam Grant. Adam Grant is the youngest full professor at Wharton School of Business, and he recently wrote a book called Give and Take. According to Grant's research, there are three kinds of people in the world, the givers, the takers, and the matchers. Ta takers like to get more than they give, putting their own interests ahead of others. Takers believe that the world is competitive, dog-eat-dog -dog place. They feel that to succeed, they need to be better than others. They prove their competence, they self-promote, and make sure they get plenty of credit for their efforts. I'm sure you know a few people like that. I certainly do. Givers, on the other hand, are focused on the success of others and acting in the best interest of others. If you're a giver at work, you simply strive to be generous in sharing your time, energy, 
knowledge, skills, ideas, and connections with other people who can benefit from them. But in the workforce, give and take becomes more complicated. Professionally, few of us are act purely like givers and takers. Matchers, striving to preserve the equal balance of giving and getting. Matchers operate on the principle of fairness. If, you do, if I do something for you, I expect something in return. So the question is, who does better in the workplace? Well, according to Grant, it's complicated. But here's a story I borrowed from Grant that may shed some light. It's a story about Cat Cole, someone who you would call a giver. When she was 15, her single mother worked three jobs to make ends meet. Cat got a job in the mall selling clothes. Two years later, she added a second job. She worked in the restaurant as a hostess, then as a waitress. She worked all jobs and became the first person in her family to go to college. But she continued to work. She studied engineering and planned on going to law school. But one day, when a cook in her restaurant quit, she offered to fill in. Then the manager left, and she, co she covered that role as well. Unfortunately, by the age of 20, her responsibilities at Hooters, that's where she worked, took up so much time she failed her classes and dropped out of school. She was a giver, and might be thought of at that point in her life as not very successful. She sacrificed herself for others, or in her case, for Hooters. But the lesson we learn from Kat is not that givers finish last. Kat dropped out because she was spending more time working. But all of that dedication to others, all the learning she experienced, propelled her up the corporate ladder. Her sacrifice did not go unnoticed, and Kat was given opportunities to represent Hooters around the world at age 19. Her reputation as someone who would do whatever needed to be done landed her a role of head of the corporate training program at 20. When she turned 32, she was named president of a company. That company is called Cinnabon. And today, three years later, Cinnabon has reached $1 billion in sales. Kat's giving didn't help her in the short term, but it paid dividends over time. Takers may enjoy immediate gratification. Givers make a more long-term investment in themselves. As you begin this next phase of your lives, I wish I could offer you a magic formula for getting ahead. The truth is, you will probably enjoy success as a taker, but for how long and at what cost? Takers may get more today, but givers build relationships that yield for a lifetime. And when you give and you see how helping others serves as motivation to continue to help, and while giving, opportunities for learning present themselves. True success is built on three things, relationships, motivation, and learning. You know we are living in a vastly different world from our parents and grandparents. Change is a constant in our lives, so learning is key. Eric Hoffer stated, in a time of drastic changes, it is the learners who inherit the future. The learned usually find themselves equipped to live in a world that no longer exists. The road ahead of you is long, and along the way you will encounter many types. What type do you want to be? In closing, I would like to leave you with just one thought. Confucius said, wherever you go, go with all your heart. Good luck 
and congratulations to the class of 2014. May your future be one of giving and learning. Thank you. Mayor, on behalf of Kaiser University, we'd like to present you with this token of our appreciation. Thank you. Thank you so much.